Look, welcome to the show. You co-host this with me. So this is your show too. And today we're going to be talking to Adam Frank. If you don't know Adam Frank, he does some amazing stuff on the automation for chimes, smart plans, back end. Uh, Adam, put up your link whenever you get a chance in the chat so people know what you do. Okay. We're going to be talking about how we take care of our online leads, internet leads, Facebook, Google, wherever you're getting them from. The idea behind it is to have a good follow-up plan. And Adam is really, really great at that. I'll chime in in between Adam with, with verbiage, with strategies. You're more on the tech side and setting it up, but show us what you got, man. Yeah, because I'm, I'm more, yeah, I'm, I'm about the nuts and bolts and about the processes and systems. Um, but the, the concepts are kind of related to that. So essentially the first thing I want to talk about is basics of lead generation. And, and like, this isn't, meant to be condescending which means talking down to people like you um it's meant to be just like like don't overthink lead generation lead generation is easier than you think throw a couple hundred bucks 300 bucks a month at facebook you're going to get people in your system now your job starts lead generation is the easiest setup to ever do don't overthink it but it needs to be done right if you want to find success in following up and converting online leads because your, your leads in your database, they're probably in at least eight to 10 other agent CRMs, okay? One of the big points that I see, and I know Brett, I'm not gonna take credit for this, I know Brett has, has uh, shouted this from the roof, rooftops in the two years I've known him, is you need to target your lead generation to fit your business, okay? And what I mean by that is um, if you are a newer agent, you're right around the median price point. You have no business running luxury, luxury lead gen. If you do really, really well with first time home buyers, not a good idea to run seller ads. That's not what you're good at, right? I am horrible at working with people in person and doing showings and everything else. That's why I focus <laughs> on the nerd stuff, not the production stuff, right? You need to figure out what you do. I love to cook. I'm really good at it. My girlfriend is not. So I cook, she eats. That's how that works. Same Dude, thing I'm with lead generation, that. right? Just, just. Well, just, hold on, hold on, Adam. What's Don't that? let's not overlook that because I want to know what you're great at cooking at. Like, what what do you like to cook? What's your go-to? Anything. So it's like I don't have a favorite food because my BMI index indicates that I absolutely love food, so I'm not really too picky. Um, I do everything from American, typically American comfort. I'm really big on grilling. So I can do um, ribs, um, seafood, steak, lamb, wild game. Um, so much, so much so that you even have a barbecue. Vegetables. For your yeah. What did I, what did I come in on here? I, I, I do, I do fruit. Dude, you missed, so, you missed the whole food thing, Brent. Yeah. Dang it. So when you do, uh, if you make like a peach cobbler, but you grill the peaches first, and then finish it up in the recipe. That's going to be some magic. So okay. So Pro what tip. I just what I just <laughs> discovered in the first six minutes here is that this is Chime Basics, but it's also Adam's cooking class. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's his barbecue method, Brett. The yep. barbecue method. Hey, I I've have the some, runway out some, method. He has the barbecue method. Right. I've got some ribs I'm going to be making for dinner tonight. So nice, nice. But um, so yeah, the um. That's kind of the that's kind of the concept is, is just just match match everything up to your business. When you are um, when you're just kind of grabbing at straws, you're going to be unorganized, and people are going to pick up on that, right? Like, like it's it's when you get flustered because you just can't think of anything on the spot. Pick it on you, Tristan, a little bit. That story about your first uh, you know million dollar listing appointment, you got flustered. You had no idea. You're like, man, because that's just what we charge, dude. You know, and you, you were unprepared for that, but now that you're prepared because now you're, now you, your lead generation is fitting what you do for your business and what your business is, you're a pro. That's true. Yeah. So That's true. Keeping, um, keeping that real. <laughs> if we're, if we're talking about types of follow-up, I'll kind of give you guys mine real fast. Um, so my background, 
aviation. I'm literally sitting in an aviation shop right now. Um, um, air traffic control, right? So in the tower, we work what's called runway out. So the most important thing is happening on the runway. That's where uh, you can't really get hurt in the air, but you can absolutely get hurt when you hit the ground. So things happen around the airport. As they get closer to the runway, more uh, you basically get, they get more attention. I use that with my leads as well. As they get hotter, as they get closer to doing something, they get more of my attention. So I work a runway out model. So the person that is three months out, to me, they're on like a five mile final. I'm not even thinking really about them. Someone who's a year out, they're 10 miles out. They're not even on my radar scope. And so what I do with that is as the person gets closer to doing something, mm -hmm. they get more and more of my personal time. So the person that's, you know, 10 miles out or a year out, they're going to get mostly automation. So yeah. I want to go to both of you on that part. Yeah. When, when we have the online leads coming through, how do you categorize them? Because I find that most agents, they, they, they just open up their database and like, let's see here now right. who's right. And then they get lost and then they have no conversion. So Brett, I'm going to go to you first. Tell me sure. about categorization. Okay. So I break everything down to hot, warm, cold, not responded. Those are my three big ones. Hot is 30 days or less with a pre-approval in hand. So if they are in hot and this is the least, there should be almost no leads in here. There should be very few and you should know everything about them. So when I'm having meaningful conversations with my leads, I'm trying to figure out where they're at. And, and I know that certain lead sources produce better leads as far as further down the funnel. And so I know I can talk to those people, but 30 days or less, pre-approval in hand for a buyer, that's a hot lead to me. Um, warm is 31 to 60 days. And that is, uh, you know, basically they, they might have a pre-approval ready. They probably are not going to, but that's my chance to talk to them about lenders. Um, cold, 61 to 90 days. Um, most of the time, they're not going to have a pre-approval letter in hand and that they're not ready to have that conversation yet. They're far enough up the funnel where they're not ready to have that conversation. And so what I do, and I love the AI assistant, I really do. Um, so I let my AI assistant do its thing. And then I will reach out usually and try to try to gauge where they're at or take the, the information the AI assistant gives me and just figure out where in those three pipelines they fall. Are they 30 days or less, 31 to 60, or are they 61 to 90? And anything over 61 or anything over 90, I'm willing to adjust my cold to work for that. Maybe your lead sources are, only, are converting within 180 days, but they're still ready to do something in 180 days. You can put them in cold too. Don't overthink it. That makes sense? 100%, guys. So what about you, Adam? Is it similar or is it slightly different? I do. Yeah, I use something similar with a little bit of a twist. So I keep it simple like Brett, hot, warm, cold, not ready. Uh, one, two, three, or more than three months out from my interpretation that's different than his is from meeting in person. So when when there are, I'm, I'm looking to convert my, my philosophy is I'm converting to have the lead meet in, an agent in person. The first agent they meet in person, you have about a 90% chance of actually being hired by that person. So that's what I want to tee up is I want to set appointments. That's my mentality going into it. Um, I do split the not ready in a not ready as they respond to the AI and also a not ready as they didn't respond. And I'm going to take them down a different path to dress out and address what the AI couldn't or didn't. Um, my experience, about 50% of everybody coming in will not respond to the bot the first five days. So I know that basically half of my lead gen, I'm going to need to try a different tactic than using the AI assistant, which I'm totally fine with because I don't care what I do. I just need to get it done. Um, from there, I basically am paying more attention to the nitty gritty details like lead score. I run the greens first and I don't really worry about the oranges. So if I'm doing any kind of manual reach out to the oranges, I will um, do like a, um, a mass mass manual reach out. The greens are personal communication, manual one-on-one. -on -one. Um, anybody that's in a great, they typically should not have a low enough lead score to where they're, um, they're gray, which I believe is like under 50 or something like that. Um, those are pretty much when I see those, I just kick them over to my not ready because they just, they're, they need to get their stuff together. So pretty, pretty similar overall. It just a little, the minutia is a little bit different. So, yeah. 
All right, so let's talk about automation because we have the AI in place, we have the smart plans in some cases, right? Uh, Adam, you actually pick up the phone and actually call people too, right? And Brett, you do a lot more, um, you both call, but I'm just saying, Brett, you do more of the automation smart plans build up. I used to, I used to call a lot more, but at 500 leads a day, it's virtually impossible. All right, it, hold it, on, let's, let's pause right there. Where are you getting 500 leads a day from? Because everybody all, asks all the time. It's all, it's all organic. So um, we use digital assets that are put on. So I don't, I don't focus at all on SEO. I, did, I put no effort into SEO at all. So what we've done is we've figured out how to get in front of people using digital assets, which are videos. Basically a lot, a lot of videos, thousands of videos that are all strategically placed uh, across multiple topics in multiple cities doing multiple things. Are you going to go over that at the Chime event, Growth Hacking? Which I'm going to cover of? a whole lot of it. Okay, good. good. All right. <laughs> it's, it's, it's really, to get up here, <laughs> it takes a little bit. <laughs> All right, good, good. We'll, we'll build up to that part. Adam, as far as the automation part with the smart plans, what have you found works? Because if AI isn't working and you're saying only 50% are responding, What's happening to the other 50%? Give me the, the details so that we can put it into play. They're getting um, followed up with manually. So the, the concept of how I came out with the automation stuff was when I first turned on the AI assistant a year and a half ago, wherever it was, um, I looked at the, the pop-up that had the AI accessory plans. And I looked at the triggers and I said, okay, cool. So if the AI assistant tags a lead as part of the qualification process that matches up with a certain smart plan to continue on the conversation that either occurred or in the, or in the case of not responding, the lack of conversation. So I was like, okay, cool. And I'm like, well, let me see what else we can automate from this. Cause I'm like, if we can, if we can start a smart plan off a tag, which most CRMs can, what else can we do off of that tag? And that's when I discovered the, ability to, I believe at that time, it was only ability to change pipelines. So I was like, okay, cool, I can do this. So now I want to still have those accessory smart plans trigger from that tag, but I also want that tag to sort into different pipelines so that I'm kind of organizing the people that are raising their hand and the people that are kicking tires. And then my strategy can then take, okay, I've got basically between my hot, warm and cold, that's my next 90 days of potential business where the, the, the communication and or behavior indicators of that lead in my system indicates to me that in the next 90 days or less, I might be writing a contract with them. So those are the people I'm gonna focus on first. I'm gonna work them in the morning. I'm gonna deal with the actual clients in person. And then if I'm bored and I have nothing to do, then I can run through the not ready people and kind of take it that way. So when I'm doing the manual follow-up, so let's say the people come in and not ready and they haven't responded to the AI. I am looking at the details of their situation. Do they have valid contact information? Is that an undelivered text? Is that flagged as a landline? Is that, which I'm gonna give them a call. I can't do a voicemail drop. I can't text them. They're probably not gonna open emails. So I'm gonna hit the phone and try to get them to give me a valid, um, a valid cell phone number that I can text so that they don't miss out on homes or information that I need to send them or point them in that direction. Do you? I prefer, I prefer a cell phone because it gives me three ways of contacting them. I can call, voicemail, drop, and text. In email, you can only email and you can't do anything else with. So email you, to me uh, is just Do you ever leave a voicemail? Do you ever that? leave a voicemail, Adam? Always. Voicemail? If they, yeah, if they, if they, if, if I reach out to them on the phone, I'm either manually leaving it or I'm doing a voicemail drop afterwards. But if I if I pick up the phone and make a call at some point, whether it's a voicemail drop, a manual voicemail being left, or we connect on a call, they're going to hear my voice 100% of the time, no exceptions. Yep, I agree with that. All right, now, Brett, what do you do differently than Adam? Because there's so many different ways to get to success here. Um, I am, I am a big, big fan of voicemail drops. Um, and, and I have, a, I have a few reasons for it. Shoot, um, man. Num because I usually one, hear the opposite. I usually hear the opposite no, where a voicemail they, they work. work. 
they work. <laughs> and here's the here's the thing about here's the thing about voicemail drops. Again, we have to we have to go on a large scale. Remember, we, we this isn't ten leads a week. This is thousands of leads a week. And so I have to. I like when people get to hear my voice or my other half's voice. They hear her voice more than mine because it's much better. Um, but anyways, so I like voicemail drops. On usually, I'll do that even before my AI assistant reaches out. Um, literally it, it, it's a smart plan that triggers immediately and sends a voicemail drop. And that voicemail drop basically is like a, Hey, thanks for registering on the site. Really appreciate you stopping by. Want to make sure that we're looking out for your home search. Let us know if you need anything. I'm walking into a meeting, blah, 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 blah. Call me back type of thing. And I do that because I'm with Adam. Okay. So we, back in the day, like it used to, it used to not be a great thing to leave voicemails, right? Cause people would get inundated by voicemails. But yep. these days, I don't know about you, Tristan, but I notice that when I get spam calls, what do they not do? They don't leave a voicemail. People are trained not to leave voicemails. And so if you leave a voicemail, you're now stepping yourself outside of what every other caller is doing. It feels a lot more personal. So I always try to go with the personal approach, which is leave a voicemail, let them hear my voice, let them know I'm a real person. I'm not a spammer. Um, that I'm really, there's a real person back there trying to look out for their home search or their home valuation. So I, and then, I do that. And then a nudge text. So if I, if I yep. leave a voicemail manually or, or yep. drop, I take a, a Tristan nudge text and I say, left you a voicemail, Adam, bluecompassteam.com. Yep. So every, every text has my first name and my website because yep. that's where I want them to go. Yep. I, I do the same thing. And, and how, Adam, do you wait like three or four minutes or do you do it right away? Depends on the timeline, actually. Yeah. So if they're, the, the hotter they are, the, the quicker I'm going to get because it gives a sense of urgency. If I'm yeah. like, I call, I leave a voicemail, I send a text, you're like, okay, this needs, I need, to, like they're in a meeting, I'm like, hey, my agent's calling me, I got to get this you know, kind of thing. Um, and if they're, you know, if I'm playing around with like my not readies, kind of going through the oranges and not readies or grays, it's whatever. I'll I usually usually I'll do that in uh, um, usually do that in in bulk and just kind of burn burn through and whatever slide broadcast sends out, I send it goes. So. Uh, and to to answer Brooke, uh, I do evergreen evergreen text, um, ever ever evergreen video. Um, I don't do video text anymore. I I don't I'm not a big fan of video texting. It doesn't have the open rate because people aren't used to it yet. Um, that's what I found at least. Um, I do a, an evergreen text and an evergreen voicemail drop is what I use. Um, again, I can't, I can't customize those things, uh, anymore because, because of the volume of leads. Um, I do want to talk, I, I have a question for you, Adam, because I think you and I do things, you and I used to do things very similar and then I changed something and then I'm asked <clears> Tristan <throat> the same question. So without going into it too much, just quickly, do you leave people? that should be marked as dead or do you delete them? Tristan, do you delete or do you mark as dead? I don't, I don't delete, dude. I just, okay. I don't, I don't even mark as dead. I, I, re, okay. I remark it. Adam, delete I, or mark as I, dead? I am not afraid of my delete button. I just cut my database in half over the weekend and okay. I didn't lose any sleep over it. <laughs> Tristan, Tristan, Tristan and I are on the same, okay. So I want, I want to make this really clear. I'm really in the middle right now because I used to be the delete king. Over my years of real estate, I've probably deleted 10, 15,000 leads. And my wife figured out, she one day she goes, hey, why are you deleting these people? Like, why are we doing this? And I'm like, I, dude, look what they, Mickey Mouse. I'm never going to reach Mickey Mouse or my favorite <laughs> one. And Adam, I, I love your, Adam has the coolest email for this. But anyways, Jenny, 8675309, um, that whole thing, he oh, has a great email yeah. for that. But anywho, they leave me fake information and I used to just delete, man. I delete, delete, delete. And if they put the same information again, I just delete them again. Um, I think I deleted one contact like 11 times before they got the hint. That was my mentality. And she goes, why are we doing this? And I was like, I don't know. She goes, it's my business. I'm, I'm now doing it my way. You're going to leave these and you're not going to delete them. So I'm over in the corner, Ooh. like, like scratching because, you know, this is killing me. Uh, last year of the people that had bad information, she closed four of those. And, and, and I know that's not a huge number. Okay. But here, here's something you need to think about. Those are people that I would have deleted in a heartbeat without even thinking about it. Uh, one was an FU. That was a good one. Um, and she kept it, but here's what happened. 
that person's life changed. Something happened in their life and it changed. They came back and re-registered with real information and Chime did the whole, hey, this person might be this person. And she reached out of all the leads that she gets. She reached out and she calls them directly. And she goes, hey, I saw that you were looking for a three bed, two bath house. Hey, what changed? I think you were on my website a while back and you were looking for something different. And they were like, yeah, you know what? At the time, like we didn't think we could buy anything. We'd just been told by a lender we couldn't and, and life has changed. We inherited money and now we're able to buy a house. And they came back to her and they registered on the site and Chime teed up that opportunity. So I am, she convinced me and now I eat crow. So every time I do one of these, I have to like, Eat pro. Uh, I go. I, I've gone. I've gone back and forth. I used to. So I used to use Delete Pond as a soft delete. Yeah. Where yeah. I just want to. You know, it's like if, if they tell me to go jump in a lake and everything. It's like just Delete Pond to get out of my face. I'm gonna when I'm bored or something or I need a new agent to sell a hundred leads to to make a quick hundred bucks of lunch money. I'll do yeah. it. But that's kind of what I did. And then I think part of it was just like a new kind of like a um, a new year kind of a clean out. And I just went through yeah. and I just dumped a whole bunch. It was just. Okay, let's just get get rid of the trash. Start again. It'll be fine. Chances are they're going to come back in my system anyways through my marketing. So, right, that's I I um try try not deleting for a while. Do it for Aurora. Don't don't do it for me because I'm I'm sitting over just like <laughs> yeah. Anyways, well, here's here's where I changed and and look, I still if if the email is no good and the phone number is no good, yeah, those those are obviously delete. But I'm talking about the people like Brett said said, Hey, I'm not, no, don't ever call me again. Or don't ever email me again. Those I keep a hundred percent because yeah, those, yeah, those, those ones I keep. Yep. Right. Good. She, so, she keeps, she keeps all of them. If it's bad it's, information, she keeps all of that. And I don't know how chimes doing it, but the person that it was, their name was literally F you. And, and the number was zero, 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 zero no email address or it was like F off at F off. So, so they remembered the IP address and retargeting. I think that's what they did. Yeah, that's, that's probably what happened. That's interesting. It was, it was so slick because she was like, you know, here's what you were looking for. Uh, or here's what I think you were looking for when you hear before. They're like, how do you remember that? She goes, ah, I just, you know, I remember things like this. And, and it, it just made instant contact with the people and it gave them, it, it built trust immediately. So I love that. So I have, I have a, when I find, so I, I run a, um, I run two filters weekly on a Sunday. Um, I run an email bounced and I run an undelivered text and anybody that goes in there, I have a pipeline on the right side of closed. So it's not tracked for conversion that I dump them in. And then when I get time to do Spokio or skip trace or whatever, then I will improve that contact information, manually verify with a phone call and conversation this is actually your email okay well i'm going to send you an email look in your junk folder i want you to add this email as a contact so that you can get the information i need to send you when i need to send it to you and then once they confirm all that process then they're triaged back into the appropriate pipeline based on their timeline to take action right but if i like if i if i just like i have no idea it's a bounce this that's no thing that's just a dial tone the email bounces delete i don't i don't have time for that same with me, guys. All right. So so we're in agreement on all that. I love it. Yeah. All right. So here, as we're winding down, because we've got four minutes, tell me, I'm going to go to each of you. What's the one thing that, that you would insist that people do if they're going to just take one thing from this webinar on follow-up? What's that one piece in the follow-up section that you think everyone should be doing that they're not? Brett, go to you. Um, here's Here's my take on on, on follow up with Chime. Okay. And, and what we could take away from this, I suggest everybody sit down and, and take a few days and really start at the end goal. What is your end goal? Is your end goal to go meet this person in person? <clears throat> or is it to have an, a, any, a virtual appointment, a phone conversation? What appointment type do you want? Start there, <clears throat> then go backward and build your follow up backward off of that. What is the next step before meeting them in person? And then what's the step before that? And then the step before that. Adam does things one way. I do things another way. Tristan does things another way. We're all pretty similar, but we do things a little bit differently because all three of us are in different markets. You're in a different market. 
you have a different system. Your team looks different than ours. And so what I tell people is start with what your end goal is and work backwards to the start. That's your follow-up. That's how you build a follow-up. And if you can do that, take a week to do that, you're, you're in. All right. How about you, Brett? Nope. I mean, Adam. Sorry. How about you, Adam? <laughs> right. the other Let's Brett. go back to Brett. Brett, right. tell me again. No, go tell ahead. me more. <laughs> um, the uh, concept, Brett and I both work similar with the work backwards to accomplish a goal kind of a thing. You know, because like a lot of it is basically like, right, like, like I want to get a lot of the agents think like, okay, well, I want to generate leads so I can close. Okay, that's cool. But like, what, what does it look like when you're closed, right? The, 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 the future facing concept is basically like, I want to get leads and I want to close them so I can be a good agent, right? That's cool. But it's a shotgun approach. You're not targeted. So if you are like, I want to close first time home buyers. Okay, well, what does that process look like? You close it, you got the hugs, you got the kissing babies and shaking hands. Now, what got you there? Let's let's walk that back and you tell me the whole thing. Like the, I remember the concept, like it's like something like the five whys of, prob- of uh, pro- uh, problem solving, same concept. Why did you get to the closing table? Okay, well then what led you to do that? What led you to do and just walk it back from the start? And now you're like, okay, crap. If I want to close first time home buyers using an FHA loan, I've got my roadmap. Yep. The heart, the easy part is done. Now you just have to execute, right? Um, I think one of the biggest takeaways that not only just targeting to fit what you actually do in business is for follow up. I think one of the crucial things that people need to keep in mind, besides just don't overthink this stuff, is follow up appropriate to the timing of where they are. We need to be on the leads timeline. They are never going to be on our timeline. If I need to pay my rent or I need to pay my truck payment, I can't just say, hey, you need to hurry up and, and get pre-approved because like my bills are due. Nobody cares about what our life is about. So being able to be patient and have the, the reservation to be patient and, and work with them on their timeline and follow up appropriately to that. Nine, nothing in real estate is a 911 situation. You are not going to live or die by real estate. There's other factors that are completely unrelated to real estate. If a lender isn't answering the phone, that is not an emergency. Nobody is going to live or die because of that. That is completely immaterial. If you've got a hot lead and they're like, hey, I, w- I want to you know, meet today or whatever, and, and, and you can't, it is not the end of the world. Don't worry about it. Just, just keep moving forward. Did I agree with that? And then I'll just add one thing do a better job of categorizing people from the very beginning. Yep. Because not everybody, not everybody is equal. Right. And yes. so make sure to join us. We're doing, what's it Our called? Friend. Growth Hacking 2022 for Chime. Yeah. Right? So Brett's going to be on there. Adam's going to be on there. We have a whole bunch of other amazing people on there. Uh, mm-hmm. Let's, uh, let's make it super big guys. So I'm going to promote it a lot. Help me out. Help grow it everyone here register for that it's in the group we're going to blast it up by email and you'll learn a lot your head's going to hurt after i think i was just to say yeah i think next week is going to be part three of the 101 series yes so i think it's going to be brett myself and Corey prince and we're going to be kind of wrapping this up so we did basically like the the basics of chime 101 part one this is more about the basic lead gen and follow-up concepts and then uh, Brett, myself, and Corey are going to be talking about like, okay, now all that stuff is done, right? You got your right. targeted lead generation. You've got your timing-based follow-up. Now what do we do? How do we work what we have to get in front of people in person and start closing contracts? So have, that's going to be the next stage. I have one thing before I go because I missed the first part of this. So I have one final thing. Sure. Before you start generating leads before you turn up the lead flow, make your follow-up work for you. Start with follow-up first yep. then generate leads because I'm going to tell you a secret about this. And this is from generating hundreds and hundreds of leads a day. If you have follow-up in place, you can literally just turn up the volume and just let the leads flow in once your follow-ups set. So once you have the system, you can turn everything up to 10. So start then so at leads. Yep. So if, you, yep. if you didn't go grocery shopping first, don't start a dinner party invite right. invitation. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> you <laughs> you and food, food, man. We started on food. Always goes back to food. It's always. <laughs> hey, man, That's if so you don't good. have the brisket, <laughs> don't start the barbecue. You exactly. are welcome, Adam. <laughs> oh, that's really good, exactly. guys. All right. Have an awesome day, Adam. Hey, Brett, good. thanks so much. Guys. Right. And thanks, everybody else, for joining. You bet. See you guys. 